Finally made it. Started driving around six o'clock this morning. It's now a little after 2 p.m. We've made it into the Halliburton Highlands. We got the boat loaded and we're on our way. Down the river to the lake. So, we got here not too, too long ago, and, uh, well, Ghost was barreling around and hurt his paw, cut it a little, required a little bit of, uh, medical attention. Uh, then it started pouring rain for a little while, so we kind of hunkered down and sat it out for a bit, and, uh, after it stopped, we hung around the lake for a little while and uh, just sort of let everything calm down and dry out a little bit. <clears throat> so I think this is where we're going to set up. There's not a whole lot of flat ground in this area. So I don't know, this probably is the best spot. So. Got a, there's also a lot of moss, lots and lots of spongy, spongy moss, which should make it a little more comfortable. All of this will come in handy for starting fires, so I'm not going to throw it too far away. dry hemlock so bugs get kind of bad shortly after it rains had to change into some shorts too the humidity level come up just holy jumpings get a little rain and all of a sudden it's so humid you can barely breathe so yeah, I think this uh, 
I think this will fit my tent. Yeah, it looks like that'll work. We got a, a nice little uh, maple sapling here, maple sapling here. The door will fit sort of right in the middle. We'll just have to be careful not to step on this one too, too much. Or at all, actually. We don't want to kill it. Okay, try to conserve some battery power. I'll be back in a minute with a properly set up tent. Okay, so after many mosquito bites, tent's up. Now, uh, normally, you know, I really wouldn't, uh, wouldn't be that worried about the rain fly. <clears throat> but, you know, I mean, the weather was... You know, it was like this, it was sort of sunny, and it wasn't too bad, and then all of a sudden, boom, rain. Came on without warning. So, uh, and it, it actually started pretty hard, too. You know, just like a light drizzle for about eight seconds, and then, bang, it was just pouring rain. So, uh, to be on the safe side, I think I'm going to put the fly on. Because I don't, I don't really think that I'm going to have much time to do that if it decides to rain again. And uh, it's it's so hot and humid though, like it's just so hot. I I normally would leave leave it open, so uh, it won't it won't get so hot. But uh, I don't know. I don't think I can risk it. So. Once I find the front of this ring fly, anyway. There it is. Okay, so tent is up. Fly is on. Big ol' woods self-inflating sleep mat. I love this thing, I really do. It uh, it makes sleeping on the ground so much more comfortable. At some point I'd like to get a hammock and uh, instead of setting up a tent just throw up a tarp and uh, put the hammock under the tarp do it all up real nice like that but uh, in bugs like this no no not this time so we'll just let that thing inflate
Holy jumpings, this is unreal. You know, like just half an hour ago, it was just pouring rain. These things have been sitting in the sun on the ground for, I don't know, five, ten minutes. And they're all, almost too hot to touch. It's kind of crazy. Boy, oh boy, I think I, think I should have left my pants on. Putting shorts on might not have been such a great idea. So, being that it's so hot, humid, I'm sweating up a storm. Probably sweating my sunscreen off now. Anyway, um, I am going to go jump in the lake. I'll let that uh, self-inflating mattress inflate as much as it's going to. And then uh, I like a slightly firmer mattress, so I'll probably put, I don't know, 10, 15 breaths into the thing and it's it's right up, it's good. So uh, uh, at some point I'll uh, maybe get a fire pit sort of figured out and going. Um, but for the now, I'm not. I'm not really wanting to do that. I'm not wanting to lug anything around or you know do anything this physical in this heat, in these bugs. So uh, more to come. But I'm gonna go jump in the lake now. Wind's picked up a lot. Thunder started lightning. Had a had a nice swim, 15, 20 minutes. And uh, I don't know if you can hear the thunder there or not, but uh, quite a lot. But uh, yeah, 15, 20 minute swim, very refreshing. Um, but the rain started, thunder and lightning. I don't think I'm going to have a fire tonight. Very much doubt it. But, uh, maybe I'll set up a tarp so I can sit underneath the, uh, the tarp without, you know, any rain or whatever. But I won't film really any of that because I don't want this camera to get ruined. But, uh, yeah, more days to come. of right now. It's way too dark for the camera to really pick up anything. But there's a northern loon out on the lake. just started doing that about two minutes ago. since I like coming up here to be able to hear the sound of the northern loon. Maybe he's done for now.
first morning. It's uh, probably getting fairly close to 6 a.m., I think. I don't have a watch. I don't have my phone on me. I don't have anything like that. The only electronic piece of equipment I have on me is this camera. But look at that. Birds are singing. There's a loon off in the distance somewhere. Definitely, uh, definitely worse ways to wake up, my friends. <clears throat> so, trying to catch breakfast at this point. So we were a little bit slow to start today. Everything being kind of cold and damp and I forgot my French press. So no coffee today. So uh, we had uh, some little pastry desserts. had a fish kind of working at my line no. No, I don't know I might have stripped my hook clean Very rocky bottom on this lake when you can uh, when you can reach it. So I guess I'm gonna reel in and rebate my hook, and I'm gonna unsnag Kristen's line. <laughs> yeah, you turned a fish into a snag, didn't you? I think it's like there's something there. Yeah, a rock. You can't talk like that on camera. This is for YouTube. Is it still recording? Yeah. I can probably. There's worse on YouTube. All right. Take care of these fishing poles and this. There was something back. There. there was. Well, there's not anymore. So now it's a snag. We'll get her done. Hey, hey, careful. How's it over here now? Uh, because you were caught underneath the boat. Oh yeah, it's definitely a snag. Okay. I'm going to take care of this. So, it's probably getting around 8 o'clock a.m. After many many snags and a lot of lost worms 
and a bunch of rock bass. Breakfast is served. Nice smallmouth bass. Not uh, not a big monster one like I was hoping for, but uh, generally it's usually better to leave the big big ones in the lake anyway because they're the the breeders. They're the ones that uh, that you generally want to put back. We put back a bunch of smallmouth bass that were too small actually. But uh, that one there, <clears throat> that's a couple of nice pan fry fillets for breakfast. So that is definitely what we're doing. So I think we're about to call it quits for a little while. And then uh, maybe later on today, go down to the river and see about brook trout. But uh, until this this evening, our our bass time is uh, coming to an end. So, <coughs> Red Pine Lake, folks. So, it's breakfast time. I guess we only got just the one. But uh, a couple of fillets for breakfast will be nice. I don't. Uh, I don't imagine a lot of people fillet their fish quite the same way. I've seen a bunch of different ways. But, all in all, I'm not really much for finesse. I just want to get food on the plate, basically. I think I need to sharpen my knife. And when you're up in the wilds, you're generally going to want to dispose of whatever you're not going to eat into the water. A lot of bears up here. But the one bonus, there's also a larger number of snapping turtles. And the snapping turtles will get in before the bears will take most of that stuff away. Some mosquitoes today.
not a very lucky day, but there we go. There's breakfast. This morning than I intended to. Oh. Really nice morning. Except for the mosquitoes. Enjoy my morning view. I haven't been doing a whole lot of filming this trip. I can't seem to find my tripod anywhere. I'm pretty sure I brought it. But uh, I don't know where in the world it went. been enjoying myself. It'd be nice if I can find that tripod and take a little more uh, a little more video than I have been. Did a lot of Spent a lot of time in the water yesterday, too. In the boat, in the kayak. Oh. Yeah, the mosquitoes are a little too bad right now to be doing much as far as filming goes or anything, so I'm going to get out of these mosquitoes. Hopefully I find my tripod be able to film a little bit more.
getting a fire started here wouldn't be a problem at all. There's lots of birch, dead standing and dead fallen. This is excellent, excellent fire starter. I mean, the only thing that's probably better than this for getting a good fire roaring would be pine cones. But, uh, yeah, your white birch, this stuff is, it's just like paper. It, it, it'll light a fire really, really quickly. The mosquitoes and the deer flies and whatnot are pretty horrendous here this week. I mean, I, I've been up here a lot, a lot, a lot. And they're always here. They're, you know, just, they're so much worse for some reason this year. You either have to keep a smoky fire going or keep on the move. <clears throat> All of that. Near the shoreline, it's it's not too too bad. All in all, you start getting up into that, that's some thick, crazy bush. Hello, ghost. Buddy. We got down here. Oh, I so wish I had a waterproof camera. Okay. Check that out. <clears throat> I'll do a, a video, Ghost and I, but, uh, yep. Mm. We got wintergreen here. It's all over, actually. There's no berries yet. But, uh, it's nice and refreshing. What I do with this stuff is, uh, mosquitoes, stop for a second. I take this and I sort of steep it into a kind of a tea or you know, kind of whatever, but um, then I add some ash from the campfire, boil it down just a just a little bit so it's kind of thick, and uh, it's a it's an awesome toothpaste in the bush. So, depending on you know how long you're out for maybe in a survival situation, the last thing that you're going to want is uh, toothache. But uh, <clears throat> you know, a little bit of ash from the campfire in wintergreen makes a really, really effective toothpaste. And it doesn't taste horrible as if you're just using the ash from the campfire. But uh, yeah, I'll do a video about that. We'll go sometime before I leave. Absolutely love this place. 
this is all crown land. And uh, there's some cottages up here. Look at that there. There is some cottages up here and, you know, whatnot. Um, but they stopped selling land up here sometime in the 60s, I think. So the only cottages that are on this lake have been here a good long time. And that's the only cottages that'll ever be on this lake. And, uh, you know, I mean, the area is just totally untouched by human hands. Other than that, it's so nice here. There's, uh, <clears throat> you know, there's, there's bears and wolves and cougars and, you know, that kind of stuff around here. There's also, uh, fishers and martins. I've seen a couple of them since I've been up here. <clears throat> and, uh, <clears throat> haven't been able to get them on video or even pictures. They're, they're shy and they move so quickly. Tons of blue heron, loons. The uh, the northern loon is pretty thick up here. You hear them pretty much every night. There's uh, usual assortment of. Uh, Snakes and rodentia. Tons of mice up here. You really gotta you gotta keep your food packed away and secured. Mice will come in and chew up all your stuff. But uh, neat looking. This lake has uh, bass and trout, uh, speckled trout, and lake trout, and I believe rainbow trout. Um, there's also an invasive species that's made it made its way in here uh, called ling, and. Uh, I'll tell you, they're the ugliest looking fish I think I've ever seen. They're uglier and like gobies or groupers, man. They are, they are ugly, but uh, surprisingly enough, they're delicious. They taste just like lake trout. So I guess if you absolutely have to have an invasive species, that, that uh, at the very least they, they taste really good. A lot like one of the native species we have here. Here we are, pine cones. There's littered everywhere. Awesome way to get a fire going. You don't you don't have to play around. I'm sure we all know by now that uh, Evergreen trees are generally heavy on a, a flammable resin. Makes it, uh, makes it excellent wood to start a fire with. Well, their pine cones are heavy in that resin too. And uh, yeah, there's hemlock, cedar. Most of the uh, most of the area is hemlock and cedar. There's a lot of white pine and red pine. There's actually more white pine than uh, than red pine, which kind of makes me wonder why they called it Red Pine Lake. But uh, absolutely, absolutely awesome place to be. I don't think there's really anywhere in the world I'd rather be than here, all in all. There's blueberries everywhere. I mean, they're kind of going out of season right now, but we've managed to 
find quite a lot. Well, that breeze feels really, really nice. Really nice. But I imagine it's playing havoc with the microphone of the camera, so I'm going to shut her down now. And, uh, we'll, uh, maybe pick up a little later when I'm, uh, doing something interesting. Oh, well, came out to uh, one of the little islands out in the middle of the lake. Try to beat the heat a little bit. It's definitely much nicer out here. Out in the middle of the lake, a nice breeze. The heat's a little better. I'm kind of impressed with the island. It's uh, it's covered in blueberries and wintergreen, spruce, hemlock, cedar, and pine behind the camera and over here. All of that makes a uh, nice tea. Um, pretty good for you too. breeze. Hope you can hear me okay. The wind. I don't know what, uh, what it's going to sound like. I guess I'll find that out in editing. But, uh, very, very nice. There's, uh, there's a lot of bulrush over there. Uh, if you wanted to make a real smoky fire, you know, to get rid of the mosquitoes and black flies and whatnot. There's juniper growing on the far end. That really smokes up, gets rid of the bugs. It's, uh, it's a nice little place. It's no camping allowed here, I don't think. So I guess even if I wanted to, I, I couldn't move my campsite out here. But uh, it's Celsius. Out here you don't feel it quite so bad. Mosquitoes and, and uh, nuisance bugs are a little bit better. I mean, I'm, I'm still getting chewed up a bit, but it's, it's definitely better. Definitely a place to, to hang out for a while, swim a little. See, it's definitely a shame there's no camping allowed here. There's uh, a real nice area here that'd be great for a tent. You just need to, you know, clean up. But uh, most of the area is littered with pine cones. Excellent for starting fire. And, uh, where did I see it now? There's also just like birch bark just sort of laying around, which now that I actually have a good look around, there's no birch trees on this island. So, Maybe somebody brought this in, or maybe it blew in on the wind, I don't know, but still, it's here. It'd be so easy to start a fire here. This would make an excellent area to set up a tent, nice and flat. Um, you know, the, the trees here are all real healthy and really nice. I, I can't see them coming down. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. Maybe for my next trip, I might uh, check with the ministry and see what the restrictions are about this, uh, this place. Because uh, it, it would be nice to maybe spend a night or two here. 
make some uh, make some different kinds of teas and eat some blueberries and bull rush. Ghost and Baron having a good time as always. Hey, come on, you guys. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. He's a good boy. So, this is Baron, my little buddy. His ghost, you already know, probably, if you've watched any of my videos. They just, they just love playing. But, uh, yeah, I'll bring you with me for a little bit here. Blueberry bushes growing all around here. We got bulrushes out there. I'm sure there's sorry there we are some bull rushes out there and then I'm sure there's plenty of good fishing out in that area ourselves we're having a great time beating the heat there's a nice little sand beach back over there that's really awesome and, uh, Nice, uh, nice bare rock right down to the lake. You could probably fish right off of that. One thing uh, for anybody who is much fishing, fish love structure. So that. Uh, that bare rock sort of drops off a fair bit. Then there's a little bit of a, a shoal there, rocks and whatnot, and then it drops off again. You're not really gonna be able to see it with the camera, but you know, that's gonna, that's gotta be a good fishing spot. Here, I would imagine be able to put in some minnow traps, catch bait down in this area here. And uh, although I haven't seen any frogs jump while I was walking up this way, you never know. There could be some frogs in here. If not, way across over there. Let me get a shot of that. See if I can. Let's 
So down in over there, I would imagine you'd probably get some frogs or some bait of some kind. So it's really hard to keep this on target when it's focused in like that. So. I don't know. But you never know. Probably catch some bait in here. Fish off the other side. So. Yeah, we're just, uh, we're just enjoying ourselves. Beating the heat a little bit. Really like the breeze out here. So nice. So yeah. We'll uh we're gonna explore around here a little bit more. Might even take the boat over there and have a look see at uh shoreline on the other side. But uh This is, uh, this is living, guys. This is living. Anybody who, uh, who says, oh, you know, I'd like to try camping. I'm going to do that sometime. Now's the time. Now's always the time. You don't know what you're missing. I do this as much as I can. You know, I'm not going to be able to do this forever. Someday I'm going to get old and not be able to lug a 40 pound pack into the woods, sleep on the ground, all of that. So, you know, I'm enjoying it while I can. And uh, honestly, you should be too. You know, grab yourself some cheap stuff. Give it a try. If you like it as much as I do, eventually you'll, you'll find time to Upgrade every once in a while. We'll get a few things here and there. You know, I mean, most of what I do, I, I do on a budget. A lot of my stuff runs Canadian Tire or, uh, or Walmart. Um, you know, I mean, I don't, I don't have that many things that are very, very expensive. And, uh, you know, heck, my, my tent, um, I had a really, really nice tent for the longest time, but you know, it, it, well, I had it for 15 years and it was getting old and worn out and got some holes in it. And rather than patch a 15 year old tent, I just went on to uh, a website called Kijiji and uh, I got a nice tent for, uh, I think it was 40 bucks I paid for it. And uh, you guys would have saw me setting that tent up. So. You know, got a great tent for 40 bucks to replace my old one. And uh, who knows, I might use that for the next 10 or 15 years. It's it's great. Um, most of my other stuff, sort of budget, bargain, you know. Um, you don't necessarily want to skimp out on a, on a knife. You know, I paid almost a hundred bucks for mine, and I know there's more out there that uh, are much more expensive. But uh, you don't you don't want to cheap out and buy some, you know, cheapo ten or fifteen dollar knife. You you should probably spend, you know, as much as you possibly can on it. Um, but uh, other than that, you know, most camp gear you don't have to spend a whole lot on. So. Anybody who's been thinking about giving it a try and just hasn't yet, you don't know what you're missing. And when you finally get out and do it, you're, you'll, you'll wish that you had done it sooner. I almost guarantee it. So, yeah, definitely, definitely get out and give her a go. Get your fishing license. Heck, get your hunting license. Small game, you know, whatever. You know, give it a... Won't regret it.
But, uh, yeah. Hello, ghost. Hello, Baron. Well, I'm going to go play with my dogs now. Hey, guys. Camp update. It's early, early, early in the morning. We got up. The winds were whipping around pretty good. The whole sky is just overcast gray. So uh, check the weather report. We got four days of high winds and torrential rain coming, so we're packing her up early. Kind of a drag. I found my tripod later in the afternoon yesterday. And uh, I had a whole bunch planned for the next two days, but uh, it's not going to be good weather, so I think it's time we uh, break camp, pack it down, go visit some family in Muskoka, which is uh, about an hour and a half drive back towards home anyway. So we're going to spend a couple of days visiting uh, some old friends and, and my family and whatnot, rather than be out here in the pouring rain and pack up a wet camp so uh, I'll plan another trip come up here hopefully not lose my tripod or anything like that and actually do some uh, some proper camp video but uh, yeah thanks for watching thanks for uh, liking and sharing and any comments you want to make, anything like that, it's all uh, it's all appreciated. I had a great time. It might not look like it now, but I just woke up. I'm a little bit groggy, and I'm sure if you've watched the whole video, you'll remember I forgot my uh, French press. So coffee has been practically non-existent. Uh, It's actually, you know, we'll stop at a Tim Hortons on our way too, and uh, we'll get a coffee into us, and uh, that'll be nice too. So it sucks we got to break camp and leave early, but it's good we're going to be able to go and see some family and get some coffee into us. So I'm going to start ripping all this down, and we'll get out of here quickly before the rain starts, because uh, we got to go all the way across the lake and down a fairly long river and uh, get out of, you know, everything back into the SUV before the rain starts, which according to the weather is, is coming relatively soon, so we got to get at her. So once again, thanks a lot. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it.